Good morning, folks. I haven't had a lot of time to be out here in the Brewster Pool in my home waters this summer. I've been chasing kokanee all over, but uh, it's really a remarkable year. There's over 650,000 sockeye returned to the Columbia this year. It's the second largest run ever. And uh, we've really seen a, just a dramatic change in this fishery in the last decade. You know, in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, there was around 20,000 sockeye returned into the Columbia annually. And starting in the 2010s and to, up to modern day, uh, the runs have really been increasing. You know, we I've seen averages closer to 200,000 fish, which is a pretty remarkable recovery for salmon fishery, especially in a time when uh, there seems to be less positive stories like that, especially with the uh, Schnook struggling and uh, less successful coho. But we've really seen a really strong bounce back in this fishery. So we'll see if we can't find a few today. Uh, limits four. Hopefully they'll start biting soon. Oop, there's fish. There we go. First one of the day. Now these sockeye don't grow to very large sizes compared to like Alaska sockeye. They'll just be in the two to six pound range. Hey, get away. Oh no. Hung up in my freaking thing. There we go. That one. That one was at three ounces. 25 feet of line out. On a pink spinner. There's another one. I got a double. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they stopped. <laughs> Squirrely guys. There we go, two in the net. That's crazy. That was on a pink hoochie. A little bit bigger fish. So last time we had to run this large, it was unfortunately extremely hot in the river, Columbia River, all the way up. Uh, was lethally warm in a lot of places and we lost about 200,000 fish uh, in the river. This fishery is really unique in that it's basically a giant fish trap because these fish want to swim up the Okanagan River to Lake Osoyoos to spawn. But the, every summer the river gets lethally warm and it basically traps them here in the Brewster Pool with this cold Columbia River water until the first rains in the fall. So it's a giant fish trap essentially. All right, so there's my double to start in the morning. Not too bad. But yeah, sort of average sizes. They're not giant, you know, two pounds maybe four so to catch these we just use i'll show you the different rigs here this is a roy two dodger i got here that i taped up pink hoochie red hooks about 12 inch leader size one on i'm using matsuo sickle hooks and i put a piece of coon shrimp on it and i'm going to troll anywhere from one and a half to two miles per hour On this side, I'm running a Max Double D with a pink Paulina Peak Moon Jelly Spinner. And I changed out the hooks, upgraded to size one knot hooks with the Gamakatsu Split Shot Drop Shot Pink. I'm kind of a hook junkie, so sorry about all the hook mumbo jumbo, but they're the most important thing on your setup, I think, is your hooks. So what's behind the meteoric rise in uh, sockeye populations? As with anything in population biology, um, there's a couple of factors at play here. A big one is that they've really changed on how they're dumping water in the spring. It's helping the sockeye out migrate 
have higher survivorship when they're moving downstream towards the ocean. They're also working on some restoration efforts in BC. A lot of that efforts is being led by the tribes. And uh, they've been reintroducing them through a hatchery program into Skaha Lake. And they're working at moving them into Okanagan Lake. All of these fish right now, once we get the first rains in the fall, are going to move up into a Soyuz Lake and spawn. And then lastly, the ocean conditions have just been really favoring these shorter life cycle salmon. So like, you know, schnooks take five years, whereas sockeye take four. And they spend that first year in the lake. So they only spend a short time in the ocean, two, three years. And it seems like ocean conditions have really favored those fish that uh, have those shorter life cycles. So we've seen absolutely massive runs of sockeye in Bristol Bay. Uh, I think they are record shattering actually in Bristol Bay this year. And seeing good numbers here in the Columbia. So all of these sockeye here will be wild. Um, there isn't really much of a hatchery program for sockeye in the upper Columbia because most of these fish are just wild spawn. Like I said, they do have a small hatchery program working to uh, restore these fish into Skaha and Okanagan lakes. But most of these fish are just wild born. Oop, that was a bite. Oop, there's fish. Since you has one on and I got one too here. This is fish. Get them turned here. There we go. Another one of these fish in a barrel. Once the first fall rains come, these fish will bolt up the Okanagan and get going on their way. But for now, they're all trapped up here and this Brewster pool until the fall rain. So it really is a giant fish trap. Fish in a barrel. It's a good looking fish. Good job, Sidra. How deep? 37. With four ounces. Okay, let's get some more. Oh, there was a bite there. Didn't get him though. Now historically, the runs were up towards of three million, but uh, don't think we're gonna get there until we get the Snake River dams out and get Another half million at least in the Snake River. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. That's number four for me. And my limit for the day. All right, so there's my fourth fish of the day. Pretty exciting, very easy limit this morning. It's 6.40 and I'm done. Uh, but just really cool to see this fishery coming back. There's a lot of sad stories when it comes to Columbia River salmon, but uh, we are seeing progress with species like sockeye. Um, as a variety of agencies, organizations, tribes, and governments make the right decisions and really help these fish out. Hopefully they keep coming back and even bigger numbers as we go. These things that cut absolutely amazing, I'll show you here. Uh, they're just vibrant red, very firm meat. They have a great texture and taste. So if you have any questions about this fishery, just let me know. I also have a bunch of videos on how to target these fish and especially some specific ones for kayaking, which it's a great 
uh, kayak fishery. It will depend on water temperatures, how well it lasts into the season with really cold water from good uh, snowpack and a relatively mild summer. Um, these fish um, will maintain their quality through most of August, uh, but they will start to decline. And then once we get those first rains, they'll run up the Okanagan on their way to Canada to spawn. All right, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. All right, bye.